Hey there guys, DMO73 here, uh, finally back and in the working order for a feature match for this week. Uh, I am showing you guys a black, blue, white Mikage vampire list versus my friend David Silas who is playing a, a four color uh, zero um, kind of control, mid rangey. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe because he can flip really aggressively, but he can also kind of control the board state. So we'll go ahead and dig right in. So as you saw, it looks like I'm going to be on the. I think I'm on the draw here. Can't remember which one I chose. I believe I chose to be on the draw. Um, so we'll just see how this goes. So vampires have a very interesting uh, mechanic in the fact that they just, uh, well, they don't have a ton of creatures. The the vampires that we got in this new set have a lot of power, and Mikage himself has a really good uh, ability to just kind of control the board state. Whereas Zero, you know, has a lot of answers and also is a very big powerhouse uh, just by herself and is a good answer to rulers, um, you know, to J rulers because of her ability to just uh, eliminate uh, threats. So it'll be an interesting interesting um it'll be interesting to see how this goes so here we go see my hand i have uh space time anomaly power absorption rinka feeling pretty good about all of those i don't really necessarily need the magic suites right off the bat and I also have a new machine with Taro, which is fantastic uh, for a good, strong start for um, Mikage. So I am going to be on the play. Uh, so I decided to be on the play here, um, which is not terrible. Wish I had one drop to be able to play, but it's not too bad. David plays a Excalibur, gets a Ruler's Memoria off the top, and then plays a um, Tama to draw a card. During my upkeep, I'm going to ping it for one damage and start getting those blood counters on Mikage. And then I'll play my two drop. Thinking about whether or not I want to play a two drop or just kind of be a little bit more passive here. I go ahead and decide and take a chance because uh, I'm not too worried about him having to kill that uh, Rinka right away. Um, so I'm just going to play the Rinka and start to put some pressure on the board. You always have to be careful against Zero, you know, with the fact that they can play um, Zero's Magic Light. That's always something to be mindful of, especially since they can play it for one. Yeah, you see me move that little light token on there. That's just to help represent his Energize, um, just so that we both are aware that he has the Energize up and available. Plays another Tama to draw another card. Plays a Scorn of Dark Alice, which is going to get him Umashima Taro, because that's the only Resonator in my hand. And then he just passes the turn. Uh, that feels kind of weird that he didn't um, do something there. Um, to swing because he has the zero magic light but then again he would have had to burn his energize so that's not ideal for him um, I do draw into another Taro which is nice and then I play that nameless mist hoping to be able to grab the zero's magic light and there's indeed a zero's magic light there I also probably honestly I probably should have grabbed the Levitine um, just to be able to slow down but I want to be able to put some damage on board uh, so we're gonna go ahead and give Rinka flying and then swing in for six I'll Put him down to 34 and then Rinka will get a plus one counter back on her So pretty good way to deal some early damage and then I just leave up those other two stones So I know he's got the Levitine now, which means that his zero can just be super fast when he needs it. He plays the Levitine. Pays two and uses space time collapse to just kill the Rinka. Feels like it might have been a pretty heavy investment, but like Rinka, because Rinka is a threat, yes, but I don't really like space time collapse outside of playing zero, um, or outside of playing um, 
uh, Gil Lapis just because you don't get as much of an effect and it's not an instant. So you saw me uh, eat one of the Tamans with Mikage in response to the swing, and then he swung in with the other one, so take two damage there, down to 38. So I just call Stone and I pass. At the end of the turn, he's going to play a Melfi, on the, and in response to the Melfi trigger, because I don't want him ramping up any further. I'm gonna play power absorption to hit it for six damage, which will kill it. So he doesn't get to make use of it. And now he's burned his energize. So now I'm back ahead in will, technically. Moving to his turn, he recovers. Taps for another stone. Hits another ruler's memoria. Place the wind secluded refuge. Swings with um, Tama, and I'm gonna eat it twice with Mikage. I do it one at a time just in case he decides to trigger the wind secluded refuge for some reason. And it just passes the turn. So I'm up to five counters on Mikage, which is pretty nice. I know he plays black card, so I have to be careful about black, about black moonbeam. Um, so I have to play kind of smart here. Uh, finally see that second water source, which is really nice for me. Go ahead and play a Nameless Mist, see if I can rip something out of his hand. Scorn and a Glorious. Hit the Scorn, because I want to be able to keep my creatures in hand, and I'm not terribly too worried about a... Uh, not terribly too worried about the other card the twofold chant just because he doesn't really have much other quick casts to be able to make it happen so like he I'm just it's essentially gonna be a two drop wall of wind which is not very effective in this matchup so he's gonna go ahead and flip he's tapped twice so zero is now a 13 13 dealing 15 damage he swings in and then pumps her up so 19 damage to me so I obviously can't let that happen again Draw to turn in my upkeep. So this is where I gotta try to play a little bit smart because if I can get rid of that zero, the game is probably pretty much mine. I'll cast the space time from my hand. He lets that resolve, so I'll draw. Just draw into Death Scythe there, which is like the best thing I could possibly see. Do it again from Grave and Upkeep. He's going to give her Imperishable in response. Draw from that as well, then I'm going to recover. So I'm in a really good spot here because he has to have... Um, he has to have Black Moonbeam here in order to be able to keep his zero alive. And I know that he's got a two-fold chant at a, at a Glorious. So it's kind of like if he doesn't have it like so I'm just gonna flip here he has to have top decked the moonbeam and even then I'm still in like really good shape because I can just dump all of my counters onto him and it's going to go through so I can just do the effect like two times and I only do it once here um, which is probably a mistake but, and he chooses not to cancel it, so I have killed the zero, which is really good for me, because uh, now my um, Mikage has the Imperishable, and I've got some backup cards in my hand. Um, I'll play Levitine. And I'll say move into combat. So overall that worked out really really well for me because Zero can definitely be a tricky matchup for Mikage. Um, because he didn't have the Black Moonbeam though, I was in a definite, definitely stronger position. play the black source I know that you saw me shift some stones around there but it really it really didn't matter um, so I attempt to play nameless mist he lets that resolve 
Oh, and I get to grab the twofold chance out of his hand, which is nice. Could have played that first and grabbed the Black Moonbeam. That would have been the smarter decision. Um, just to make sure that Mikage was going to stick, because I had the will open to do it. I could just see his hand, see if he had the Moonbeam flip and then kill him. Um, but got a little bit ahead of myself there. And I go to combat, and then he just uses zero to remove my swiftness uh, and imperishable and everything else. So I have it back, which is nice, um, but nothing else really happened there. Plays a Tama to draw a card, then passes the turn. During my upheap, I'm gonna get the two taps from Mikage, so he's an 11-11, dealing 13 damage. Tap for a stone. Leave up a blue source for a... and play a Celestial Wing Seraph. Just kind of just insult to injury at this point. It's you know, it's the whole effect of I've got rid of his bigger threat, and so now I'm kind of putting him in a position where he has to kind of um, pick his battles, and he's running out of options here. Plus, it gets the Tama out of the way, and then I just pass. At the end of the turn, he's going to flash in a Melfi, and I can't answer it. So it's fine with me. Doesn't really do much for him, though. Taps for a stone. Gets another green white stone. And he just passes. Taps for Mikage as well. Get all my stones lined up, play another Death Scythe. Attempt to swing 10. Take him down to 30. Uh, get a trigger, so I get to gain 6 life. He's going to take a grand. So he's choosing not to block. Swing in for 9 with Lucifer. This puts him down to 15 which is well within range to be able to kill since Mikake is an 11-11 dealing 13 damage and I've got a lot of pumps still available and all these options in my hand for what I can deal with so I'm going to swing in for 11 he's going to remove the flying from it it's gonna to go to block um, in response to the block I simply cast the space time that's in my hand Give it minus five, minus five. Two cards left in the hand. He goes ahead and sacks the wind secluded to protect it. I will recast it from grave, which he can't do anything to. Draw my card, and then I'll remove one counter from Yukage to deal the other minus one needed to kill Melfi. So that'll kill Melfi, the, and then I just tap to pump up Mikage, and that's the end of game one. So we move into game two. So obviously I know that he has the potential to flip zero early, so I gotta be careful with that. Um, I also have to be really careful about uh, watching out for a black moonbeam, as always, because he is playing black. Um, for the zero player, he has to make sure to um, not. It, it is probably advantageous to him to flip zero as early as possible, but he also needs to be able to back it up uh, and keep it protected and not fall prey to like some of my tricks. He chose to go on the draw, so he wanted the energized token. I played Shara for my turn one, and then I just pass. Plays the Levitine, so I know it's there. Gets the Ruler's Memoria, plays a Tama, and draws a card, and passes the turn. Tapping for a second stone, hit a blue source. Play Nameless Mist. 
two in Secluded Refuge, two Cancel Spells, and an Interdimensional Escape. So, overall not the best hand, but he's got two Wind Secluded Refuges, so at least one of them is going to stick. So I have to get rid of one of the Wind Secluded's. Um, because the Cancel Spells are kind of irrelevant, um, at least early on. And then the Interdimensional Escape is practically worthless, because I'm not playing a ton of creatures. So, six damage to him, because Rinka got the... Er, Shara got the plus one, plus one, so she can attack. Putting him down to 34. Then I'll play a Horn of the Sacred Beasts because I can. And then I'll pass the turn. See, he draws into, looks like a high speed dash or a Seal of Wind and Light. Gets his second stone. Taps them both and plays the Wind Secluded Refuge. And I can't answer that, so he draws a card off of it. And then passes the turn to me. During the upkeep, I'm going to ping his Tama for one with Mikage. And then recover. Tap for stone, get a darkness stone. Swing in for six again. He goes to block. I just ping it for one more with Mikage so that another six damage goes through. Down to 28. I'm going to leave up some stones. I know that that... Uh, I was going to let it go, but I decided to play Arinka instead. I don't know if that was my best decision. There. Kind of bluffed that I had a moonbeam or something like that. If I had left up the stones, which could have been helpful for me, made him think twice about whether or not to flip. Looking at the board state, he's looking at my stone count. He knows I don't really have a way to deal with zero right off the bat. None of his cards in his hand are particularly useful, so he is going to go ahead and flip. And then he uses his swiftness to swing into Shara. Or sorry, Rinka. And then pass it to turn to me. So draw for turn. I see that space time anomaly. See if I had left those stones up, uh, I probably could have made a much better play with space time anomaly here. Uh, I don't necessarily, I don't have Death Scythe, um, which is a problem, except I do, never mind. So I'm in a position where I can potentially answer zero, um, but I have to be really smart about it. So, because he does have the, I know he has a cancel spell in hand, I know he has the wind secluded that I have to deal with, he's going to be able to cancel something. Um, so my best bet here is probably just to pass the turn and see what happens. And I don't have a Nameless Mist to be able to draw out a Black Moonbeam, which is really unfortunate. So I just passed the turn. It's going to tap to pump up zero, so she's doing an extra little bit of damage this turn. Plays an Excalibur, so now she's got target attack. I mean, I think she already did have target attack. Plays one for Atama. Draws a card, draws into Black Moonbeam. Swings in my face. I take the damage. Taking 13. Right. Use Shara to ping Tama and kill it, which is the worst mistake I could have made here. Because he only has one stone, uh, and I have space time anomaly, and he's got the wind secluded and everything else. So if I had spent the counters instead to hit my own Tama, or hit my own Shara, and put the counters on Mikage, I actually could have killed zero here. So that was a big misplay on my part. Uh, I could have used all those counters, put three more on Mikage, got space time in hand, uh, and I probably would have had enough to be able to deal with that um, with that zero. And the thing is, he would have been completely vulnerable because there's no way he cast Black Moonbeam this turn. Um, so I made a really big mistake there. But either way, it would have been really hard for me to to actually make the kill here. Um, which is kind of unfortunate, and I wish I had a Nameless Mist. 
Um, Nameless Miss would have been really great because I could grab that black moonbeam that he has in his hand. Um, but instead, I just have to pass because I can't really answer the zero. I've got no way to kill it. It takes no battle damage. So I just have to pass the turn. So he pumps up his zero. He's now a 13 13, dealing 15 damage. He's going to recover. Shara. In response, I'm going to put three counters on her. And then, or eat her for three damage. So, pump up my Mikage here real quick. Attempt to cast the Space Time Anomaly from my hand. that resolve so she's now a 6-6 so I've got lots of options here wish I had drawn into a black moonbeam because uh, then I could just play around and make everything happen play a levity not that it matters Should have cast the space time anomaly again um, to put her down to a 1 1. And then I could just flip and put all those counters on her. But in, so I'm going to flip. I still retain priority because he doesn't put a trigger. And here's where I misplay again. So I try to do them one at a time in order to try to bait out the tap. And instead, I get black moonbeamed. And I have no way to answer that because I technically pass priority. And so I can't stack anything against it. And so Mikage is going to die. And he doesn't have imperishable. So. I completely misplayed that, whereas if I had cast the Space Time Anomaly from Grave, um, and then, I mean, he could have cancelled it, right, and that's totally viable, um, and there's just really no way for, if that had happened, so, I was in a really bad position there, and I kind of essentially just needed Black Moonbeam <laughs> in order to make that work, um, or I could have played that just a little bit differently, um, and just removed all the counters and then cast space time anomaly later but mikage died he's got a zero on board there was nothing i can do so i just scooped the game and said let's go to game three so primarily due to my own misplays because uh, if i put all the counters on um shot if i put all the counters on mikage instead uh, i could have just dumped all the counters and then it wouldn't have mattered if he tapped or not um to buff up by 200 because he would have had way more than enough uh minuses on him to just straight up kill him um and then even if he prevents one of them like space time anomaly is also there and space time anomaly could have just done it and so we would have traded rulers uh which puts me in a much better position because my creatures are inherently stronger than his as you see he's just playing lots of tamas so i actually chose to go on the draw here so i get the counter and i energize really fast and i just play shara right off the cuff to put some pressure on him pretty early I'm not terribly too worried about Atama. He has to tap for at least one more stone in order to be able to get uh, zero flipped. Um, overall, things feel not terrible. So he plays another Tama, draws another card. Plays a Levitine. Take two. There's that one stone up, and I don't want to risk losing my uh, Shara to a magic light, especially since I'm pretty sure I have a Nameless Mist in hand and could possibly grab it. Um, so there's really no point in me trying to block. And 200 damage isn't anything to really be concerned about. Tap for stone. Like I said, there's that Nameless Mist, so now I can look at his hand and see what's happening. Wind Secluded Refuge, the Zero's Magic Light. I actually hit the Wind Secluded Refuge um, because I definitely want to make sure that Zero doesn't have that protection. 
and then I'm just gonna go ahead and cast the second one and grab the zero's magic light and so that's just out of the way give her uh, just swing at his face for eight see what happens either he blocks or he's gonna take eight damage um, either way I get rid of something or deal a pretty decent chunk of damage and Rink is gonna get another counter on her so he's gonna block Rinka gets another counter. Play a uh, Horn of the Sacred Beast. Again, just because I can. And then I pass the turn. At the end of the turn, he uses his uh, Levitine to produce an extra will and flash in his Melfi. Goes ahead and flips and just works, spends his time to kill my Rinka. Then plays another Tama and draws a card and passes the turn. Play that black moonbeam don't even bother giving him any chance to tap for imperishable or anything else like that I just play the moonbeam and finish off the zero uh, which puts me in a really really strong position for this game um, i have access to mikage who's just a win con and life game by himself and again as we've seen his deck doesn't really deal a ton of damage and my creatures just have a stronger base than his do um, so getting that zero off the board right away is pretty helpful. And then he happened to draw into a wind secluded refuge uh, just a little bit too late. Swings for two, I take the damage. Swings for two, I take the damage, go down to 34. Uh, plus another three from Melfi, 37, or it takes me down to 31. He really has no reason to not just swing in and push pressure. Um, Cause I'm not gonna be able, that glorious in his hand is not gonna come out this turn. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's just not going to happen. So I ping Melfi for one during the upkeep with Mikage, and then do the typical play of drop a um, Umashima Taro, just designed to get rid of a creature, and then he's going to use that Wind Secluded to protect it, which is fine. Um, and then I just pass the turn at that, I think. Taps for another Ruler's Memoria. Pays two. He uses that space time collapse to get rid of my creature. Again, it yes, it's a removal, but it, it just doesn't feel very effective. I'm gonna try to kill one of the Tamas to get some counters on my Mikage. He's gonna swing for two. Uh, and then he is going to, I think he leaves up the Melfi here so that he can play the Glorious next turn if he needs to. So overall, he's doing these little chips, which is fine, but he's not really uh, in a, he's really not in a good position because the longer the game goes, the stronger Mikage gets. And he's just not in a position right now where he can put a lot of pressure on me. So I'm just going to keep getting more and more stones and turn Mikage into a spot removal spell that I can reuse every single turn. Um, and then eventually he's just going to be out of time. So he tries to flash in the Glorious. He's got nothing to kill, but the trigger will still happen. It is an automatic trigger. Uh, so in response, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to space time anomaly him while he's completely vulnerable. And then I will ping him two more with Mikage uh, to deal a total of seven damage, or two damage and minus five, minus five. And then I get to draw a card. So we go into his turn. See that no another Ruler's Memoria come out. There's another Melfi and it looks like an Excalibur. Swings for two. Can't stop it, take the damage. Swings for three, can't stop that either. Five damage, go down 24. Ping the Melfi for one during my upkeep. Recover. Tap for a stone. Out comes the Taro again to kill the Melfi. 
which will die. Okay, one to play Nameless Mist. Uh, in response, he's gonna go ahead and uh, discard the Excalibur and flash in the other Melfi. Melfi triggers, but does nothing. Uh, you'll have to excuse me, I'm on the phone. There, I got a call. But I'm gonna keep playing there, so I pass the turn. Draws into turn, during his upkeep, he's gonna pump up Melfi three times. And then he's gonna recover. So she's got plus one, plus one, or plus three, plus three for the turn. She's just currently a 6-9. She swings for 6. I block with Taro, who is a 6-8. Pumps her up to 7-9. In response, I'm going to go ahead and space time anomaly her. Which will... She's still a 6-9, so she'll go down to being a 5-4. Or, sorry, a 1-4. This is a little bit complicated, so we're kind of trying to do all the math together real quick. Uh, and then... So right now, she's a 1-4, and I'm a 6-8 with Taro. So... We're doing all of this minusing stuff before anything resolves. So... Well, sorry, she's currently a 6-9. When my space time resolves, she'll be a 1 4. And then his pump will resolve and she'll be a 2 5. So, space time's resolving. She's being down to there. She's a 2. And then that's going to resolve and she's a 2 4. Or a 2 5. So then. So 2-5, so she will definitely die here if he doesn't do anything. So he goes, makes her a... three six, four seven, five eight, six nine. 5 So... We just bounce. Neither one of us dies, but Taro has six damage on him. Six damage on a six. So and Taro's, and then he's gonna swing for two, deal the two hundred damage to my face, take me down to twenty-two, and then he's just gonna banish the Taro to deal two hundred damage to my Umashima. Or the Tama to kill my Umashima, but I'm just gonna respond by uh, making it hexproof for the turn uh, with magic sweets, so it's gonna survive. I draw, do the taps with Mikage. So right now he's tapped out with only one card in hand, and I've got space times to access, I've got lots of things that I can play around with, so I'm actually in a really, really strong spot here. I'm gonna play the Nameless Mist, makes Taro a 7 9, and then I can just kill the Melfi. So now I'm sitting at a point where Mikage can probably kill pretty much anything he puts into play. I'm going to start racking up a lot of counters. Um, I've got more draw power than he does. I actually start burning my own Umashima Taro to be able to uh, get more counters on there. So there's going to be um, six more. And then I recover because I did it during the end of his turn. So Taro's not damaged at all for the turn. Tap for a stone. Swing in for seven. Take him down to 33. Pass. I did call a stone. I didn't tap Mikage. Um, but. So, a little bit of weird board state there. So, don't mind me. So, he just calls stone and passes. I'm going to put another seven count, eight counters. Or seven counters with. No, I go ahead and do the full eight. So, I'm going to ping Taro during the end of his turn for 8 damage, put another 8 counters on my Mikage, draw for turn, recover. Play a Lapis Dark Storm, he's got 2 cards in hand, 
so there's I might as well just rip them both out of his hand and keep my pressure up. He goes ahead and attempts to cast the twofold chant, and I'll just pay one extra. And I do get the moonbeam out of his hand, which is phenomenal for me. Um, so that's one less threat to have to worry about. So he's still in top deck mode, and he's in a position that he's just in a lot of trouble. So eight more damage, taking him down to 26. And then I can just pass. Call for another stone. I'll pay two to play another Taro. Nothing's taking damage during the turn, so he can't kill anything. Calls for stone passes. Going to split up some damage between the two Taros at the end of the turn. Put four more counters on Mikage. So he has a lot of counters at this point. Swing for five. Taking about 21. Attempt to swing for another eight. It's going to go ahead and cast the Zero's Magic Light, which I can't protect it from. So it's going to get RFG'd. Go ahead and pay the three that I need. I go ahead and do the same thing I did kind of game one where I play Celestial Wing Seraph um, to kind of put these two massive threats on the board. Uh, and then I'm going to flip Mikage. So he's, he's left to top decking. Um, so he only gets to see one card and he has to deal with uh, three heavy hitters on the board. Um, and that's just a position where it's pretty much unwinnable at that point. Mikake is not going to have swiftness. He can't has he has natural imperishable, but you know it's, zero can just steal it. He's got plenty of open will. Um, but the best he can hope to do here is a moonbeam, which will just kill Mikage, and then he'll just take lethal from all the other stuff. Or he can see the interdimensional escape, which will still leave me with a celestial wing seraph and more than enough damage. But he just top decks the Scorn of Dark Alice. So that's the end of the game. Uh, go ahead and let me know what you think about the decks, guys. Decklist will be up later. And until next time, this is DMO73, signing off.